I, 17, was diagnosed with stage 4 all as a kid. Wasn't supposed to live. Parents decided to put me through chemotherapy to extend my life for a few months. I ended up surviving and it's been about a decade since my initial diagnosis. I'm cancer free now. My parents own two houses. For one, they hire people to clean it, and for the other, we take care of it. My parents are pretty well off, but they believe in hardworking values and want my brother and I to know how to care for ourselves and our future houses, which I think is great. The last time we were at the second house, the one we care for, we had an all-day cleaning of the whole house and yard. I wanted to call my friends later in the day, so I decided to get up early and do my end of the chores first, so that I would have time to talk with my friends. There was a list of chores on the table. I spent a few hours doing half of the chores on the list. To reiterate, I did half of the chores myself, leaving the other half to be split between my mother, my father, and my brother. I didn't choose the easiest ones or anything, I just went in order from top to bottom on the list. And I stopped when I got halfway down. Weeding, raking, pressure washing the driveway, laundry, clean bathrooms, dishes, vacuum basement and main floor, clean the boat, put the covers on the jet skis, and a few others I don't remember at the moment. Anyway, when I was done I called my friends. Mother walked in and saw me on the phone and got mad, and I told her I already did my share, actually, more than my share, of chores. She then said something along the lines of it's still not enough because you have to make up for all the chores you missed when you were sick. I'm literally so angry typing this. Sick is what she refers to as the whole cancer deal. I can't believe she'd use that against me like it was my fault. I told her that she had a lot of nerve considering that I was literally freaking dying at the time and that she hadn't done a single chore on the list. She was really upset and went into her room and slammed the door. She did end up doing a few of the chores, but me and my brother and my father picked up the rest. She was passive-aggressive the rest of the day. This happened a few weeks ago, but she still brings it up whenever I'm doing something that's not chores, saying I'm lazy and that I need to make up for the lost time during my cancer period. I haven't said anything to her about it since. I ignore it now. Am I the idiot here? I did go off on her, and in the heat of the moment I was pretty loud. I probably should have handled it in a more calm manner than I did. But I also think it was way out of line for her to use my cancer against me. Not the idiot, your mother was very stupid, sorry about that, really a despicable attitude, I'm sorry that you and your brother have to go through this, protect him, okay? He will really need you a lot, I wish you luck and strength. Get out of this house, as soon as possible, because nobody deserves it, and if you can, take your brother with you, or try to talk to your parents, showing that your father shouldn't be on your mother's side all his life, and that your mother shouldn't doing something like that, I don't think it would do much good, but you can try it, if you want to, I think that's it, good luck. Next time she pulls out that line just tell her imagine how much of my life you're going to miss out on when I never talk to you again once I move out. She is being a serious idiot bringing your cancer against you, it's not like you were in Tahiti chilling on the beach, you were fighting for your life, and the fact she brings that up would be reason enough to cut her out. Maybe some distance from her will give her perspective. My mom and I used to have a very rocky relationship, where lots of hurtful things were said on her part very screwed up things. When I moved out I put distance in and changed the dynamics of our relationship, and things got better, she knew if she was an idiot I'd go no contact again. Not the idiot, but I would highly recommend having a private conversation with your dad, as well as with your high school guidance counselor or another trusted adult or teacher if your dad doesn't go to bat for you. There is no excuse in the book your mom could give herself as a pass for referring to her child's cancer treatment that way and making those kinds of comments. Obviously, it's difficult right now, but maybe see if there's another friend or family member you can stay with during the summer to get a break from your mom. Her words were nothing short of reprehensible, and I am so sorry, OP. I'm so glad your treatments worked and that you're here with us. I, 27, never really liked my aunt, 52. She didn't really treat me well when I was a kid, always called me names, and she basically despised me so much, despite us barely seeing each other. So we've always had a rough and strained relationship. So, I hosted a family gathering at my house, mainly because it's been a while and partially to try and at least mend things since she is my aunt at the end of the day. So everyone arrived and things were going smoothly. 
let's skip to the am I the idiot part. My three-year-old son was playing around with his cousins in the garden under my supervision. You know, usual toddler things, running around recklessly, chasing each other. My son in particular was being loud, but I didn't really mind. My aunt kept on telling them to shut up, and I told her that they're kids and they're playing around, no need to tell them to shut up. This went back and forth for a bit, and eventually I had my way. My son then tripped on a rock and fell on the ground face first, causing his top lip to bleed. I picked him up and brought him and the other kids inside and told them that playtime is over. While I was attending to him, my aunt, out of frustration, then comes up with this. Serves him right. He won't be so loud and annoying next time. I turned around and said, you what, and she repeated herself like it was completely okay to say that and said that this incident will serve as a good lesson for him. That done it. I told her to get the hell out of my house and that me kicking her out will serve as a good lesson for her not to say crap like that again. Eyes were now facing my direction. She was baffled and had nothing else to say. To my surprise, she left without saying a single word. My family was shocked and not long after, everyone started leaving. The last to leave were my parents who, while on their way out, said that I let my emotions get the better of me and I shouldn't have immediately kicked her out like that. It's not like I have a wife or girlfriend to talk to about this because I'm a single father. Am I the idiot? Everyone's the idiot here. She shouldn't have said that. You shouldn't have said what you said, how you said it, and in front of who you said it. And also, I get that you have the ability to ignore your son when he's screaming. But your guests don't. Kids don't need to be silent, but when even you are acknowledging that he's being way louder than normal in close proximity to other people, you can try to have him tone it down just a little. People who don't deal with toddlers every day do find their loud shrieking irritating as they haven't come accustomed to it. Not the idiot. Take my thoughts with a grain of salt, because I believe others might handle this situation differently. What you did doesn't make you an idiot in my personal opinion. I definitely think you were standing up for your son, and you did what you had to do. That makes you a good and caring father in my eyes. I believe everything can be handled in a more diplomatic way, so it's always good to take that route if possible, but that won't stop me from jumping at anyone, being rude and insulting to someone in my family. With all due respect, your aunt was being extremely rude and disrespectful to your son. Sounds like she doesn't like kids, and she needs to learn not to say everything that pops into her head. Don't eat too hard on yourself. You absolutely did the right thing, and your aunt really is the idiot. What I always find hilarious is when someone is a complete idiot, like your aunt, and then they get offended when called on it, or others think you overreacted. It's this idea that the aunt gets to be an idiot over and over, and you're just supposed to accept it. More importantly, you have a problem with me. Fine. Let's deal with that. Don't bring my kids into it. I fully understand why you did what you did. So, my baby is 13. She has been saying she wants to be a singer since she was like 3 years old. She loves singing. She is always working on her pitch and watching videos to better her vocal cords. Her father and I split up like 8 years ago, and I never got along with her grandparents either. Important info for this. About a month ago my daughter came to me extremely upset that she couldn't nail this one piece she had been working on. She said she couldn't get the pitch correctly. I thought she sounded flipping fantastic, but she wasn't satisfied. I don't make a habit of spoiling her however this really bothered her, so I went around searching for vocal lessons without her knowing, and the cheapest ones found were $600 for a 3 week, 4 days a week course. Which is actually a fantastic deal. I splurged on it even though it put a bit of a dent in my finances. Last week was her birthday. My ex and I threw a birthday party for her at his place, where her grandparents attended. Obviously opening my one single gift, which included her acceptance letter for her vocal lessons, she was so thrilled that she had no interest in anything else, that she had received a brand new iPhone from her grandparents and a free pass coupon for a money PD from her dad. She was so overjoyed upon receiving her gift and I'm over here like crying because she is so happy that it's killing me. I get dirty looks from every corner. Her grandparents and father pulled me aside like 20 minutes later and said that my gift was ignorant because apparently it was going to teach her that she isn't good enough and said, just because she is Puerto Rican doesn't mean she can't sing. 
They seriously thought that getting my daughter vocal lessons was going to do nothing but make my daughter even more insecure about her voice, and even said that I was enabling her insecurities because her voice is perfect the way it is. My daughter heard this, unfortunately, and asked me to take her home. She cried a lot. Said her dad's family doesn't understand her. Since then I have gotten texts from her dad telling me to get refunded for the gift because I refuse to pay any child support to make up for the dent you have caused in the finances by purchasing such a stupid gift. Note that he pays $40 a month and I do just fine without him so screw that. This gift has now caused a huge dent in the family life. My daughter still loves it despite her grandparents and father making a big deal. But I now feel like an idiot because her grandparents have said they won't see her unless she gives the gift back. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Sorry to say it, but your, or rather, your ex's, family is coming from a place of ignorance. Good singers don't just magically happen. Pretty much every professional singer out there has had training at some point, and it's not because they need to be taught how to sing. It's because they need to be taught how to sing without injuring their most important instrument, their vocal cords. Singers who don't take care of their voices can end up doing damage to themselves over the course of years and may cut their career short because of it. Not the idiot. My mom would drop $200 for an hour lesson each for my sister and I to do piano lessons with our teacher. I love that guy. Although I'm not passionate about the piano. I remember being so happy and grateful at the time. You're an amazing mom. One thing my mom has taught me is that investing in your kids and trying to understand your kids' interests is the best thing ever. My mom and I are closer because of her helping us with our interests and caring about what we like. Don't let them think otherwise. Honestly screw the dad and grandparents. You are a wonderful mother who seems to care about her daughter a lot. Your daughter loves her gift and it will help her gain confidence in her singing. I used to take voice lessons, and my time with my voice coach helped me so much, it was like therapy and helped in the long run with singing ability and public speaking. Your ex and his parents are idiots if they make you take this gift back. Your daughter is so excited, and they're just jealous that you know your daughter and listen to her and what she wants. Don't feel bad for making your child happy. The local deli bakery near us makes fancy sausages, it's all homemade and they come in a variety of seasonal flavors. We get them occasionally because they're not terribly priced at $3 a sausage. Not that it matters, my favorite is the pear cinnamon sausage. My daughter, 9 years old, likes them too. Her favorite is the Hawaiian one. Just to clarify. They're pork sausages, just with extra stuff to make them special. We go there two days ago and I asked my daughter to pick out two sausages for her, and I'll pick two for me. She insisted on getting the Greek sausage. She recently had gyros for the first time, and I guess equated that flavor with everything Greek. The Greek sausage has black olive, feta, and balsamic in it. I ask if she's certain, and she insists. I knew it would go poorly later that night, but I thought this would be a valuable lesson. I got my favorite sausages, she got something new. Well, she hated it. She took one bite and fake gagged. I told her I warned her. She asked if she could have mine, but then I'm stuck with a Greek sausage. I told her no deal. She hummed and hawed for 15 minutes before asking me to make her something else. I'm not a restaurant, you eat what I make, plus she picked it herself. She either ate it or nothing else for the rest of the night. She ended up eating half of one and legitimately had sweats from forcing herself before I relented and let her leave the table. I'm a single father, so it's not like I can check in with a wife or spouse to see if I was wrong. This is how I was raised, and this would teach her to play it safe with food. If she wants to get adventurous, that's on her. But she's also only 9. I don't think I made the wrong decision but did I? You're the idiot. You knew she would not like the flavor and decided to teach her a lesson, what lesson is that? Trying new things is bad. That's a terrible lesson for a child. Why do you want her playing it safe with food? It also sounds like you didn't really warn her, you just asked if she's certain. A 9-year-old isn't going to know what the problem is, and you are the adult. Tell her that the flavor is not the same as a gyro, and maybe get one new flavor and one she likes. At this age, you should be encouraging her to try new things not making her scared of food and unwilling to give anything new a try. Perhaps you could have got one of the Greek ones and one of her favorites. Let her try the new one and not forced her to eat something she absolutely didn't like. 
if it was just not as nice as her regular, I can understand not making her something else, but if it was that bad she was gagging and sweating, you should not have forced the issue and made her something else. So, you are the idiot for forcing it, but well done for wanting to ask for advice and questioning what to do. The lesson you thought you were teaching her. Food is expensive, and making it takes work, so don't refuse to eat food that has been made for you. The lesson you are actually teaching her. Don't try new things, because dad will punish you for doing so. I don't think you were trying to be mean. And your intended lesson comes from a good place, you want your daughter to be grateful for the food she has that took time and effort to get for her. But you aren't doing that. You are the idiot. My son Luca's 12th birthday was in August, and he asked for a drum kit. He's always loved drumming on things since he was a baby, and this was all he was asking for for a year, so we bought him a decent 5-piece beginner's kit for around $500 and told him we'd pay for drum lessons. On his actual birthday and a couple of weeks after, he was always down in the basement messing with his drums. After about two weeks, he seemed to grow tired of them and went back to video games. By the time his lesson started three weeks later, he was dragging his feet about playing. In November, his drum teacher took us aside and said that Luca clearly wasn't practicing and didn't seem engaged and he felt bad taking our money because Luca wasn't making progress. We asked Luca if he wanted to keep up drum lessons, and he said no. In the interim, our 10-year-old daughter Jessie would mess around with Luca's drums when he'd let her, she'd always ask, and it was clear that she not only seemed interested in learning, but she had a good amount of natural talent. When Luca said he wanted to stop drum lessons, we asked her if she wanted to start, and she was ecstatic. After her first few lessons and her clear excitement, Luca suddenly started to get possessive and say they were his drums and he didn't want her using them. If she'd asked to use them to practice he'd say no and she'd just practice on her practice pad. After I realized what was going on, we tried to talk to him about it to figure out what was wrong, but all he'd say was, they were my birthday present, they're mine. My wife and I put our foot, feet, down and told him that, if he wasn't going to use his drums, he couldn't ban his sister from using them. If he wasn't going to use them, and wasn't going to let anyone else use them, we'd just sell them, and get his sister her own drum set. Luca has been sulky and angry at us and his sister since then, and his sister is afraid to use his drums because she adores him and doesn't want to make him mad. I'm not sure where we go from here, but my instinct is to sell his drums and buy Jesse her own. Josh thinks I should sell the drums and buy him something else, but this is a gift he begged for for over a year. My wife thinks we should continue to beg him to let Jesse borrow the drums he doesn't play. Am I the idiot for how I'm going about this? I think if my son had asked if we could sell his drums before his sister wanted to use them I might have been amenable, but he seems to be doing this just to spider. Not the idiot. Absolutely don't beg him to let his sister use them. It's time to have a grown-up conversation with him, not like a child. Get him to explain fully why the drums being his matters to him so much if he's not using them. Why he wants to hurt his sister just because he isn't using them. Explain that it's because his sister loves and looks up to him that she enjoys it in the first place and now wants to learn. He must understand consequences, so explain that asking for something for so long, getting it, and the support to practice and learn, and not use them is not his fault if he doesn't enjoy it. But he can't decide that other people can't enjoy them if he isn't. But selling them to buy another kit for his sister is a wrong move. I'd consider selling his kit since he doesn't want it, but putting the money you get from the sale into savings for him. That way he still gets his gift, the money, but he doesn't get rewarded with a new gift for being selfish and spoiled. Maybe for your daughter shop around for a cheap second-hand set. Until then leave her continue using the practice pad.